Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray now you would speak to us. Give us ears to hear your voice and hearts to follow you. We pray in your name. Amen. The gospel we've just heard read is probably one of the best known miracles that Jesus did. We call it the feeding of the 5,000, although from Matthew we learn that it was a lot more than 5,000. They just counted the men. So it's probably 10,000, maybe 12,000 or even more than that. Fed with five loaves and two fish. There's so much we could pick out of and learn from this miracle. We could think of the compassion of Jesus. Just before the passage we've read, Jesus learns of the cruel murder of John the Baptist, his cousin. And Jesus decides that he wants to withdraw to a solitary place. So he gets into a boat and is probably crewed by his disciples. Jesus needs time out to grieve. Time with his father and time with his friends. But when they get to that solitary place, it's not solitary anymore. The crowd have decided they're going to get there first. How they did that, I don't know. They were faster than Jesus and the boat. But there they were. And we read that Jesus had compassion on them and healed their sick. He put aside his needs and met the needs of the people who were there in front of him. I, I remember many years ago, probably 45 years ago, <clears throat> something like that, I was at Bible College in London and uh, we regularly had chapel services. And the chapel will fill with students and with lecturers and staff and they'd be led by students or by staff and this service was led by our Old Testament lecturer, Bob Gordon. And Bob Gordon was part the way through the service, stood at the lectern like this, when all of a sudden he stopped. He stepped round the lectern and went up to the front row. And there he knelt in front of a student who was in tears. He put aside everything he planned. He had compassion on someone in front of him in need. He put aside the needs of everyone else in that chapel and focused on the one person in need. I don't know this morning whether you need the compassion of Jesus. Maybe this morning you are, like Jesus, recently bereaved and you're grieving. Know that Jesus is here for you. He's here for everyone else, but he's here for you. Maybe you're like the crowd and you need Jesus' compassion because you need healing in body, mind or spirit. No that Jesus is here for you this morning. We could think of the compassion of Jesus from this passage that we've heard. Or we could think about the faith that Jesus has in the disciples. Jesus looks out and sees thousands of people. He knows that it's getting late. He knows they're hungry because he's hungry too. He knows the disciples don't have enough food to feed this number of people. He knows there's no way they've got enough money to buy food for the people. 
So when the disciples come to him and say, Jesus, it's getting late. Send the people to the local villages to get themselves something to eat. Jesus says, they don't need to go. You give them something to eat. And I can just imagine the look on the face of the disciples at that point. But Jesus had faith in the disciples. Jesus tells the people to sit down. He takes the five loaves and two fish, so little. He breaks the bread. He thanks his father for them and he gives it to the disciples who give it to the people. And I've often wondered when I've read the story of this miracle, where did the miracle happen? Did it happen in the hands of Jesus? Or maybe did it happen in the hands of the disciples as they broke and gave and broke and gave and looked down and looked down again and thought, what? There's still as much as I started with. So I'm going to try this again. So they broke it and looked down and, and they kept doing that and kept doing that and kept doing that. Did it happen in the hands of the disciples? Jesus had faith in the disciples. He took what little they had, thanked his father for it and gave it back to them for them to see a miracle happen. He had faith in the disciples. I wonder this morning, when you look out, what's the big thing that you look at and think, that's impossible because I've got so little. Will you offer that little to God and allow him, through you, to see something amazing happen? What is the little that you have to offer? Maybe your time. Maybe your finances. Maybe your gifts and talents. Maybe you've got to a stage in life where you feel you've got nothing more that you can give. Well, God would say to you this morning, you've got one of the most precious gifts, the gift of time to pray. If you will offer me that little gift, stand back and watch the amazing things I will do through your prayers. We could think from this passage of the compassion of Jesus. We could think of the faith of Jesus in the disciples. Or we could think of the generosity of Jesus. They give out five loaves and two fish to 5,000 people. And how much is left over? Twelve basketfuls. I don't know how big the baskets are. The Bible doesn't tell us. But they're bigger than a single loaf would have been. Twelve basketfuls. There's enough for the disciples to have a feast that evening. The generosity of Jesus. And as we read the scriptures, time and time and time again, we read of the generosity of God. He is the God who gives, pressed down, shaken together and running over. He gives and gives and gives. It's wonderful to hear of your generosity in the day that you gave so much away. And to hear this morning of what God is using that for in this community. And I'm sure the story you've heard this morning is the tip of the iceberg of what God has done through your generosity. I wonder, do you have a mindset of generosity? Do you know you can never outgive God? You can't do it. God is so generous that as you give, he will give. I, I remember when I was a new vicar quite a few years ago. And as a church, we'd 
been generous in giving, giving to Christians in other parts of the world who are so in need, giving to others and supporting the ministry of the church. And our treasurer came to me late one year and said, Sandy, we're not going to make the parish share this year. It's just not there. And I remember similar conversation time and time and time again through my time and my ministry as a vicar. And yet, every year, we paid the parish share. For those who don't know, that's the amount each Anglican church gives to support the ministry across the wider diocese and Church of England. It's an amount we're asked for each year. And every year, we paid it. We cannot outgive God. How generous are you? This week, where will you be generous to someone else and allow God to show his love for them through you? Let's take a moment of quiet. And in that quietness, allow God to speak to you. Maybe about his compassion. Maybe about his faith in you. Maybe about his call for you to be generous to others. In the quiet, listen to the still, small voice of God. Dear Father, we thank you that you are a compassionate God. For any here this morning in need, we pray they would know your compassion, your love, your care, your presence, your healing. We thank you for the faith that you have in us. Help us this week to offer to you what we feel is so little. And may we see you do amazing things through that. And we pray this this week that we would have a generosity of heart and spirit to others. That would be the overflow of your generosity to us. Help us this week in all these things. We pray in your name. Amen.